Sean David Morton, good to have you hey, here. Nice to be here, thanks. We're here at the New Living Expo, and uh, well, technically a little outside of San Francisco, but San Francisco nonetheless. Beautiful, glamorous downtown San Mateo. Downtown San Mateo. Yes. And you and I had a very interesting sort of off-the-cuff discussion about MH370, and so I figured our Conscious Life News audience would be extraordinarily happy to hear your sort of purview on the still very perplexing situation. So I'm going to let you have at it. Give give us the give us the short sheet, if you will. That that doesn't have to be too short. But I want you, you know, I want everyone to know that uh, it, I believe it was uh, very shortly after the incident of the missing plane that you broke. You were interviewed on the Huffington Post, and essentially this thing went viral, to say the least. Yes. Let's start with that, and then let the, take it from there. Okay. First thing, I make a couple, a couple of statements about this. Number one, uh, this story very much, for me, crosses the Rubicon as far as the modern media goes, where now you are being fed. It is, it, it's so obvious that you're being fed complete and utter lies and garbage by the media, because anybody who claims that they don't know where this plane is is just lying. <laughs> and that, that you have governments lying, you have the media lying, that you had 24-7 you had news coverage, wall-to-wall -wall news coverage of this, where they presented every outlandish scenario that you could possibly think of, uh, with the exception of the obvious, I might add, that, that, this, that this plane was kidnapped by the military, landed in a military base, mm -hmm. and remains there as we speak. Uh, the day this happened, actually, the, which was March uh, 8th, uh, I, that night, oddly enough, I had dinner with a woman that was a, 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 a former employee for about eight years from Malaysian Airlines. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, a white lady worked for Malaysian Airlines in Malaysia, and uh, her, husband was a, her husband was a pilot as well. And so we had dinner, and she was the one that told me that, that Malaysia Airlines was immensely corrupt, that the whole country was corrupt, that, that these pilots could be bought off for money, uh, that there's the possibility of pirates actually maybe paying these people to hijack, hijack the plane. And that she was the one that really turned me on to it, saying you have to look at, 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 at who was on the plane and what was on the plane, mm -hmm. specifically. So within about 48 hours of this, and actually when the, plane, when the plane first disappeared, and I had a chance to take a look at the, at the radar telemetry that was posted on the net by, net by a, a guy by the name of uh, uh, Dahub77, he posted the telemetry on the net where you saw a group of rather mysterious about four aircraft, aircraft off the eastern coast of Malaysia when the, when the MH370 actually then made its turn, uh -huh. actually back across, uh, across Malaysia. And one of these aircraft actually made a very interesting maneuver where it traveled about 1,200 miles in a little under seven seconds according to the radar. And what I pointed out at that time is that, is that this, is, this is exotic military technology of some kind because now we're talking, I did make, I think I made the comment that maybe it's extraterrestrial as an example that this thing actually headed towards the, the flight path of it. So that's what caught the eye of the Huffington Post people. And a woman by the name of Connie Willis wrote an article for the Huffington Post where, of course, she puffed that out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But it was myself, uh, Jesse Ventura, and another gentleman that I think was a state and a regional director for MUFON, who, uh, whose name I, I can't recall. But... Uh, she did the story under the headline, Did UFOs Kidnap MH370? That was not what I was saying. I simply pointed out that exotic military technology or something, we, you know, we're not supposed to have anything that can go 1,200 miles in about seven seconds or so. Mm -hmm. And I just noted that this was, this was around Flight 370 at, at, at the moment that it turned back to where it was going. So this article went up on the Huffington Post and went viral and, and got close to 3 million hits, actually, as it went out on the post, and within 20 minutes, the Huffington Post threw it in the memory hole and erased it for all time. And at that moment, and this was, this was about 48 hours after the, after the plane had disappeared, mm -hmm. and at that moment I realized that there was going to be a major cover-up of this story, that nobody was going to be interested in the truth of what actually happened to the plane. And it was scrubbed to the point where even people who had saved the link went back to the link and realized that they couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. That the only way we actually managed to save the article was somebody somebody realizing that the article was probably going to get scrubbed in the 20 minutes or so actually took screen grabs of it on a computer. And that was the only way that we managed to save the article. And we're talking about not just me as, uh, as having you know, the number one radio show on the internet right now, talk radio show on the mm -hmm. internet. We're also talking Jesse Ventura as well. I mean, these are pretty big name people yes. that you would think the Huffington Post would want three million people, uh, you know, tuning into its blog. And that was just in, in the first 20 minutes. So here's where it gets even, even freakier as far as this whole thing goes. 
all I did as an investigator was take a look at, at how the plane turned mm -hmm. and then draw a straight line. And if you just draw a straight line, that straight line leads you to a, a what they call a black site U.S. military base that's shared by the U.S. Navy and uh, Great Britain, which is called Diego Garcia, which is now becoming rather famous uh, around the world. Diego Garcia has been a what we call a black site prison for a period of time. It's where we torture people. It's where we send people to... Uh, uh, we torture them, and then we turn them loose and make them targets of opportunity mm -hmm. and uh, shoot them till they're dead. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Kind of like Gu Guantanamo Bay? Uh, worse. Uh, Guantanamo Bay people know about. Uh, Diego Garcia people don't know about. Diego Garcia is what happens if you are working in a, a, a top secret uh, black ops project and you spill the beans to somebody or you talk to the wrong person. That's, you know, that's where they send you where you know, nobody knows where you're ever going to go. Uh -huh. So as this, uh, uh, as this comes down, I started talking about Diego Garcia. This plane's obviously Diego Garcia. I also pointed out that if the plane disappeared from radar, that 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 would rule out a hijacking. That would rule out a uh, uh, that would rule out anything that you would have to do with the plane crashing, or the plane having to do with uh, with being hijacked by pirates or whatever. Because anybody controlling the inside of the plane would not be able to make a pl an entire aircraft disappear disappear from radar, as an example. Mm -hmm. So. That's the first thing. Then we started looking into who was on the plane and what was on the plane. The biggest thing that came up first in this, and I'm not sure if I was the first one that came up with it, but there was there was a lot of chatter and information about this, had to do with a, a very interesting company out of Austin, Texas, called Freescale Semiconductors. Freescale Semiconductors had 20 of its main executives on that aircraft. And uh, most of them, by the way, were, were Chinese, strangely enough, because they worked in Malaysia, and the plane was actually then headed to Beijing. So it was actually then headed, headed for Beijing. So then the information started coming out that four people on the aircraft actually had rights to a base patent for a new type of computer chip, a die on a computer chip, that would then allow you to charge electrical batteries very, very rapidly. And if you look at what the next generation of electric batteries is going to be, the only thing that's stopping electric cars or something like the Tesla, as an example, mm -hmm. of competing directly head-to-head -head with gasoline-powered automobiles and turtle combustion engines is that it takes a very long time to charge the batteries. Mm -hmm. In other words, you pull it into your house, and it takes anywhere from six to eight hours uh, overnight to be able to charge your car. These you would then be able to pull into a gas station where you would have a pump that would have you know, unleaded diesel and electric, plug this thing into your car, within 10 minutes you would be able to charge your car, and that would put you head-to-head -head, uh, against the actual oil companies. So these people had the patent for this, which was worth about $400 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, these four people had the patent. They had applied for the patent. The patent, the patent had not yet been approved. The plane disappears, and 48 hours later, the patent is then approved by the U.S. Patent Office, and if these people are now dead, then the patent goes to the fifth person that owned the patent, which is Freescale Semiconductor. And Freescale Semiconductor is owned by a company called uh, uh, Blackstone, mm -hmm. and Blackstone is controlled almost exclusively by uh, uh, Lord Jacob Rothschild. So that's the, the so that's the connection there with that. Now, what was on the plane? Now, if you only wanted to get rid of the people on the plane, you would just shoot it down, as an example, or engineer a crash. But inside the plane, as an example, this lady's very chatty. Uh, inside the plane, the mainstream media actually the mainstream media actually started talking about how the uh, uh, and and we said this first, by the way, the alternative media and my show, Strange Universe Radio. Uh, dot com and Revolution Radio, which is what I'm on, uh, we talked about first that there's there's something in the plane that was either nuclear, biological, or some sort of prototype battery, mm -hmm. because again it was heading towards Beijing. So what happened with the prototype battery is then the press started talking about it. mainstream press picked up the fact that there was there were cases or pallets, if you will, of ion batteries on the plane, and they were saying that somehow the ion batteries may have caused this plane to disappear from radar. It mm. gets stupider from yeah, there. Yeah, right. They. What these, what these batteries were is they were prototypes of these next generation of fast charging batteries and they were taking them to Beijing probably to show them to somebody there as to, you know, to then take them to a factory and then mass, mass produce them. Right. So that's probably what was on the plane that we didn't want the Chinese to have right. or what have you. So it, w it would explain if you have the people that own the patents, they're done. Now, you know, the $400 billion now devolves to Freescale and the Rothschilds. You have the batteries on the plane of the prototypes, now you have those. So the next question becomes, how do we know that the plane is at Diego Garcia? We know the plane's at Diego Garcia, number one, because there were certain fails in the plan of whoever this was, and I'm, I'm pretty much betting this was the U.S. Navy, because the U.S. US Navy is the only one that has the, uh, uh, that, that has the equipment, that has the technology, that has the capabilities to be able to do something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, 
again, if you have a pilot simply hijacking a plane, a pilot cannot make a plane disappear from radar. Right. And when this plane actually did, and, and, and theoretically, the plane only disappeared from civilian radar. So here's what happens. The plane goes out. This is my theory. Uh, the plane goes out. It's about an hour outside of, uh, outside of uh, landfall into the ocean on its way to Beijing. It's the most likely scenario of this is probably somebody comes over on a military frequency, says to the pilot, there's a bomb on the plane or uh, there's terrorism or you know what have you. The plane's in danger, state of emergency. You will shut down all your communications. You will follow us and you will go to this longitude and latitude. And the pilot would have to obey. Or the pilot was in on it, as an example. Now, there's a lot of people in alternative media that are also talking about how the, the plane could have been taken over by a device which is called fly-by-wire. And all 777s are equipped with this technology. All it allows you to do is a military craft, fighter jet, or an AWAC, or you know any military craft, if a plane is being hijacked, you can actually take over the plane, and you can lock out the pilots, and you can take over the, uh, the automatic autopilot. But that's it. Yeah. You yeah. can't land a plane with that. You can't. Right. You can't do uh, intricate maneuvers with it. Yes. I've heard uh, a term called uninterruptible autopilot as a technology that seems to be uh, it's been described as what you're similar to what you're describing. It's called fly by wire. And, okay. and, 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 but but fly by right. wire still, in order for you to actually fly a plane completely as a drone, mm -hmm. that would take probably another million dollars worth of hardware, mm -hmm. which anybody on the ground would see, as an example. You have all kinds of checks that these things go through. So it's unlikely. Unless you, the only way you could probably do that, like I'm convinced they did in 9-11, was you have to switch the planes midair. You have to land the other planes and then exchange them with planes that you're actually flying via Xbox or, you know, whatever it is you are, which is what they did in 9-11, by the way. They landed all four of those aircraft at, uh, at Andrews Air Force Base, and they replaced the, the four planes in the air with... Uh, uh, with drones. Anyway, so going back so going back to this, you then draw a straight line from Diego Garcia. Here's the fails in their plan. Number one, they did not count on the Malaysian military having radar as good as it was, because the Malaysian military then tracked the aircraft all the way across the uh, the island of Malaysia mm -hmm. until it got out another thousand miles or so outside the range of the range of the military. Number two, you had eyewitnesses who then saw the plane flying at a fairly low altitude, about 12,000 feet or so, uh, over islands, which are on a direct straight line to Diego Garcia. Number three, Rolls-Royce has transponders in every single one of their engines that ping Rolls-Royce 24 hours a day, seven days a week, so that all you would have to do is interview a pilot, any pilot who's flown a 777. And those pilots will tell you, if we ever had a problem with the engines, we would even not even know that the engine would have a problem. We would land on the ground, and we would be told by Rolls-Royce they would have a crew on the ground who would be there to be able to fix the engine to get the plane back up in the sky so the airline could keep making money. So anybody that's telling you that they don't know where this plane is is lying. And this is the, once again, this is the Rubicon for the press, that if people believe that the National Security Agency, which can track a cell phone into your pocket and track your location and listen to your phone call, if they don't think the NSA knows where this thing is, and if they don't, then the whole organization needs to be disbanded. And it is completely yeah. incompetent. Right. So, so that's so that's the second one. Rolls Royce had pingers on every single one of these these engines. By the way, you do not have just one black box on seven seven sevens. You have three. You have one in the cockpit. You have one in the midsection. You have one in the in, in the in the tail. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and no matter what they say, you can't get it to one in the tail, and you can't turn it off either. And you're talking about a gigantic expanse of ocean. There's nothing out there, and everything on a seven 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 is designed to float right. because these are long range aircraft that are designed to go over water, and everything floats. Okay. And there is no way that you can't see see these things from space. So, the plane lands at Diego Garcia. And what happens to the people there? This is the other yes, question. Yes, that's a big one. Now you have, now you have the, the friends and family members of the people on the plane who are rioting because they are screaming at Malaysian Airlines and the Malaysian government that they are covering things up, that they are not being told what was going on. Then you have, I heard of one incident, but I've heard there were two. Uh, incidents of people actually calling cell phones of their friends I've and family. I've heard that as well. Where the phones have not only been answered, but somebody's on the other end doesn't doesn't answer and then and then hangs up the phone. Now, Diego Garcia has about 1,600 civilian personnel. They have cell phone service to be able to call off the island, so you can actually tap into that network. That's number one. Number two, Malaysia Airlines then informs the friends and family members via text that their people are dead and you know they're never going to see your loved ones again because they were afraid if they held a press conference that the people would riot and try to murder their officials that's you know that's 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 how the cover up is going over in in Malaysia then you have the story of Philip Wood yes please talk about that and Philip Wood again and this is not my information this is other information that was coming from other people off the net Philip Wood was a, was an executive for IBM Malaysia 
and uh, the story goes that you know, Philip Wood somehow managed to secrete an iPhone on his body. Now remember, we're talking about we're talking about one of the few Americans. We're talking about we're talking about uh, one of only maybe two Americans that I think were actually on this flight. We're talking about a guy who was a very intelligent engineer, and he had about five hours to figure out that they were being hijacked. And what could he do about this if pirates were actually taking over the plane, mm -hmm. and what he could do? So he hides a cell phone on his body. So, the, so the uh, I know. Uh, so the uh, so the challenge here is is that Mr. Wood then manages to get a message out after a few days. They put a black bag on his head. Uh, he pulls his phone out. He says uh, he takes a, a photograph of where he is, which is basically just a jet black room. But we, we actually managed to then trace the signal to a longitude and uh, longitude latitude that's on Diego Garcia. Not only on Diego Garcia, but actually to a building that is a, a black site prison there. So the question is, what do they do with the people? And here's one other interesting thing. Mm -hmm. The mainstream media was refusing to verify that the four people that owned the patent for the computer chip for free-scale semiconductors were or were not on the plane. They were trying to say that alternative media was wrong on this. The challenge is the mainstream media and Malaysia Airlines released three or four different passenger manifests that had different numbers on them. One was 339, hmm. another one was 221, another one was 227. Do they not know how many people were right. on the plane? I recall that. 227, yeah. I remember hearing, yeah. and then 239, I think, is where they really settled in terms of So it wasn't a mistake by the media. These were right. numbers that were being released by Malaysia Airlines and by the government and whatever else. Mm -hmm. So there's certain people on this aircraft that they don't want you to know who they are. Yeah. So now we're at the point, and, and here's the spy versus spy version of this as well. And this is an absolute fact, and this is something that's been reported. The ion battery has been reported by the, by the, by the mainstream media, and this is something else that was reported by the mainstream media, or the MSM, as I call them, is... Uh, is there is a, an exact replica of MH370, A777, that has the same tail fin number, has the same serial numbers, and this replica of this plane, this twin of this aircraft, has been sitting in a hangar in Tel Aviv, Israel, since November. These aircraft cost $231.5 million, and Tel Aviv, last I checked, is not the cheapest real estate on Earth, and it's been sitting there in a hangar for five months with somebody paying for it. Why? Why? That's the big question. That's the other spy versus spy thing sure. here. Unless this operation had been planned since November, if the one plane was going to disappear, and then maybe the Israelis were going to use the clone of it to crash it into something, pin it on, you know, pick one, the Iranians or probably the Iranians, and use it as, an, as some excuse to start a war, maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. But now that that information has gone public, uh, that little magic trick is probably off the table. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, the only rest of this that, that, I, that I can tell you is the Malaysian military tracked it going that way. Eyewitnesses actually saw it heading towards Diego Garcia. Um, and the mainstream media, not only did they not mention Diego Garcia, but only two days ago they did a, 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 a mock story. Uh, you know, a let's, let's laugh at the stupid conspiracy theory people. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the conspiracy theorists are always right. We are always right. It just takes us a little longer to you know, figure out how things go, you know, it's because we check sources, we get we get sources from the inside. There are people on the there are people on the inside. So the so CNN does this mock story where they're saying, well, here's the conspiracy theories that a UFO abducted it, that it was a black hole, that it was whatever, or that it's at Diego Garcia. Ha ha ha. Well, number one, they haven't come up with any better theories. Uh, number two, there is uh, there's there's no wreckage of the plane anywhere, so nobody's found anything. Um, the third part about this actually is that is that Dahub 77, who put up the original telemetry of the plane turning and the mysterious aircraft off the eastern coast of Malaysia, has now posted another piece saying now they've doctored the the air flight data, mm -hmm. and have posted posted that to make it look as though the plane, uh, at the point where it turned around, actually supposedly crashed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there into the sea. So he actually posted the doctored data to say here's what it was on the day and here's what it is now. Now, we're on the 52nd day, 52nd day if I'm counting properly, yeah, uh, si so. uh, since, since the crash. After 45 days, the friends and family of the passengers are allowed to sue civilly. civilly. So now they're talking about multi-billion dollar lawsuits against mm -hmm. Boeing. But now, in a civil lawsuit, they're going to get to subpoena the records of the Malaysian government, of the U.S. Navy, of the of Boeing, mm -hmm. and I guarantee you, Boeing is not going to go down for this. Right. Boeing is not going to sit there and go, "Oh yeah, they're going to." They're not going to say our plane crashed. They're just not going to say no, it. Of not. So, somehow, some way, you've got a, a, a real 
deck shuffling behind the scenes as to who's going to take the rap for this. Who's going to take the rap for it? Uh, who's going to take the rap? Because it's not going to be Boeing. And Boeing is going to say, this was, our plane didn't crash. And in the mainstream media, they are now talking about, uh, you know, after all the times the, cons the, the conspiracy theory media, the alternative media, has been saying that the plane was hijacked. Now the mainstream media is finally saying, well, they're now treating this as a as a criminal hijacking. But, but again, the theory goes, where do you put the plane? And mm -hmm. if, if, if it was... If it was a hijacking and these were pirates, as an example, then the plane would have probably plane would have dropped to twelve thousand to five thousand feet or so and would have landed somewhere in Malaysia. Probably would have gone into the, uh, um, if I'm if I'm saying it correctly, the uh, uh, the Straits. The the uh, I'm not sure you might want to check the spelling on it, but I think it's called the Malaga Straits. Actually, okay. is what it's called because there's a great deal of pirate activity in that area. Mm -hmm. um, let me give you a couple more proofs about the Diego or Diego Garcia Please. aspect. Please. Um, it's okay. Diego Garcia is a is in what's called Bayot, which is the British Indian Ocean Territory. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a British landmass that we rent from them. That the U.S. Navy rents from them. We have a treaty with the English that says whenever we're moving in combatants, whenever we're moving in uh, uh, enemy combatants or terrorists or whatever for interrogation, no matter who it is, no matter how secret it is, we have to actually let the British know mm -hmm. uh, who's there. Just so that just so that MI MI five MI six MI six sorry can keep track of CIA and the U.S. Navy. So I think it's very interesting that Prince William and Kate were in the air <laughs> on their way to the Maldives, which is just above Diego Garcia. They're in the air when the plane disappears. I think that's interesting. Then they go to a and this is also very weird. Prince William is just completing a course in agriculture actually at Cambridge. I, be, I believe it was. He leaves all of a sudden. He's got two weeks left of his, of, of his course, and he leaves all of a sudden to take a sudden romantic getaway with his wife, Kate, to go to the Maldives, and then disappears completely off the radar for 10 days. We didn't know where he or Kate were for 10 days. They simply checked into this very bougie resort, and now we don't know where he is. Well, my theory is, is that they probably, as a representative of the British government and as the heir to the throne, they probably took William to Diego Garcia to let him sign off on whatever was going on. Ah, uh, I see. Um, because then directly after that, he then goes to, some other weird things happen, he then does a tour of New Zealand, and he goes to Wellington, and he has to get special permission from the Queen to allow him and Kate and uh, the baby Prince George to actually travel on the same plane, because you can't have two heirs to the British Empire uh, on the same craft, on the same in the same place at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, in the air. So that's, that's number one. Number two, uh, Diego Garcia then mysteriously requisitions the Australian merchant fleet to send an empty cargo ship to move to to move and transport personnel, mm -hmm. people, and they send a cargo ship called the Ocean Shield, which is steaming towards Diego Garcia, then disappears off the radar for three days. Where does it go? It goes to Diego Garcia to take these people. So and at, Diego, are, at Diego Garcia. Where we're so the requisition, what they what they requisitioned from the Australian merchant fleet was a transport vessel called the, the Ocean Shield. Mm -hmm. And so the Ocean Shield then goes towards Diego Garcia and then on its way there it just disappears off radar for three days and nobody knows where it is. Now the question is going to become what do they want with the people? What's going to happen to them? You know, I talked to another fairly highly paid source who was a former government guy, uh, Secret Service, you know, CIA, all that stuff. And uh, he said, well, uh, if they have scientists there that they want to torture or they want to absorb into black projects, they'll probably do that. You know, the women they would probably sell maybe into the sex slave markets, which means they'll wind up in Israel at one point because Israel's the, uh, Israel's for the hub. But Israel's basically the hub for the white slavery market. White slavery and, and uh, the illegal organ trade all goes mm -hmm. through, uh, all goes through Israel. Um, uh, and again, I hate my state. And uh, everybody else, you, you said you could grind them up in the engines of the battleships and turn them into fish food. So... That was his take. That's really horrible, but nonetheless. So where are we? There's no unless. You're never going to see those people ever again. Yeah. The question becomes whether or not the plane is going to show up in a false flag operation somewhere. Because the only other thing they can do with it is maybe false flag operation where uh, suddenly it's pirates or it's the Iranians or, you know, the, uh, the James Bond villain du jour. And they load it up with explosives, and they fly it into something, and you know we use it to trick up another war with somebody, you know, a la 9/11. Uh, the distraction aspect aspect of the plane has been, uh, if you look at what they're distracting you from, they're distracting you for the price of uh, price of gasoline going to 4.50 a gallon, distracting you for the United States getting its ass kicked collectively by by Putin and the Russians mm -hmm. in regards to the policy in Crimea, and uh, you know what's going on in Ukraine. 
distracting you from the Russians now openly saying that the government in Ukraine was, was backed, actually placed, there was a military coup mm -hmm. by the CIA in the Ukraine, which is true. And the United States is fighting a series of, of uh, black ops covert wars. We've gone from open armed con conflict to basically mercenaries using, uh, you know, Blackwater Academy XE. And these are the ones that are, these are the supposed rebels that we were backing in Syria. These mm -hmm. are the, you know, that's all U.S. Uh, but it also seems as though the U.S. is, you know, we're literally changing horses in the middle of the stream where we're backing one faction, then we turn around and back another faction. Yeah. But it seems like now that the current administration, not only are we giving uh, billions of dollars back to the Iranians, money that have been frozen in U.S. banks, so we've, we've recently uh, cleared another $3 billion for Iran. It's pretty crazy. It's, uh, they're distracting you from uh, Ukraine, Crimea, price of gas, price of oil, and that, the, uh, that there's going to be a massive economic reset coming up fairly soon that's going to have a lot to do with the, with the dollar collapsing, mm -hmm. which is then going to probably the most likely economic scenario will be a, a foreign and domestic Federal Reserve note. In other words, two dollars, if you will, one for outside the country and one for inside the country, mm -hmm. which seems to be the only way that we're going to be able to go now mm -hmm. uh, because we're now becoming Japan in the 80s, we're becoming Germany in the 30s, and uh, uh, over the next eight years, we're going to have the highest sustained tax rate in the history of America, mm -hmm. where the federal government alone is going to be taking about 19.5% of, of the GDP and adding another $8 trillion to the debt, which is by 2020 to 2024 going to put us up somewhere around, you know, a national debt of anywhere between 24 and $26 trillion. So there's a lot to distract us can't from. Be, it can't be sustained. It just can't be. There's it just can't be. Yeah. They, also, they also don't want you to know that there's, there's nobody watching the store at the IRS because now they say this year you've got a lower chance of being audited than ever because they fired so many people at IRS, which is good in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you have the lowest tax filing rate in history as well, which mm -hmm. is something else, which means that either people don't have jobs or they're just giving up on the system altogether and, yeah. they're, just, and they're protesting by not filing. Right. So not only does the government not have money coming in, let me point out one other thing too. They're claiming that Obamacare is a big success because 8.2 million people managed to sign up for the website. Well, that's all they did. They signed up, they got a password, but nobody knows if they actually paid anything. And most of the people who signed up for that website were people that got kicked off their regular insurance plans because of Obamacare. So, you know, all these things are beginning to come to a head. Mm -hmm. And they need something to distract people from the fact that there are no grown-ups in charge of what's going on in Washington right now. Mm -hmm. just, they just aren't. Yeah. And we're being, you know, we're being outplayed, outwitted, outsmarted, and outclassed by Vladimir Putin and the Russians. And the worst thing we could have done was sanction Russian banks and the Russians because now the Russians have said, really? That's what you're going to do? Fine. And then we're not going to trade your oil in dollars anymore. And that's mm -hmm. what the war is going to be about. Mm -hmm. This entire war of who, it's not a war, it's a wrestling match between a group of factions that are, that are wrestling for who's going to be on top, who's going to be dominant, if you will. And what they decide on using as the currency in the next 18 months or so is going to affect the outcome of the, the economics for about the next 50 years. And again, is Flight 370 part of that? It's got to be part of something. You know, yeah. was, it, was it simple greed that they wanted this pack? They wanted these batteries? Uh, $400 billion is certainly good enough to hijack a plane. Sure. Wow. So there you go. Well, Sean, thank you so much for your insight. You have obviously done your homework, to say the least. <clears throat> I think... Uh, Thanks for the cookies. <laughs> and the cupcakes. We're in, if, if our audience is noticing, we have changed venues. We were kicked out of the first room, but... You know, blessing in disguise. There's more food in here. So they put us in the room with all the cupcakes. With all the cookies and the cupcakes. And here we are. New living expo and beautiful San Mateo, California. The fun capital of North America. You got it.